Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm doing a trip stitch. I don't do that very often. And it sometimes doesn't work out, but you gotta keep trying to get better. So I've got four by 12 inch, three of them. Gallery wrapped, artist loft canvases. I am keeping them a little bit separate because I've learned that from Olga. And you know, if Olga teaches you something, you might want to pay attention. I am going to do a Dutch pour. And I'm going to use the leftover paints that I used on my abstract art that I did uh, late yesterday afternoon, which is this. And I used uh, burnt sienna, orange, uh, I mean yellow okra, um, oh gosh, there's a couple, uh, <laughs> and pewter, artist love pewter. So, I think it came out pretty cool. I like it, and it's rare that I pick up a brush or a palette. I like to do pours, but that was an old pour that I did that I had done some embellishment that was inspired by me paintings, which was, um, I put dish soap on it, and then I spray painted with this. Where are we? Hammered hammered whatever color that is <laughs> and it came out pretty cool and I've been sitting there waiting for it to inspire me to do more my mother shared a picture with me of this beautiful forest scene in the twilight and I said that's it that's the one that's the one and so I did record it but uh, all she saw was the back of my head you couldn't see anything that was happening to the painting and so I just left that out so you you might see the painting that I have the, the video I have is only a couple of like a minute or so long. I show you the dry results and the wet results. So, uh, or the wet and then the dry. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to work on that and learn how to get better at doing that. But in the meantime, let's get back to business here. So, what I'm working with here is the, the leftover paints. I mix them all together and it's like this crazy, interesting custom gold. Um, with the brown, the yellow, and the the pewter in it. It's really interesting. So I'm going to use that. I am going to use my leftover paint as my pillow. And this has all sorts of colors in it. Pink, blue, greens, uh, golds, all sorts of stuff. And uh, that's going to be my pillow paint. And... Last but not least, here comes the hard part. My cell activator is Black Amsterdam, and I'm going to uh, attempt a Dutch pour here. So wish me luck, because uh, sometimes Dutch pours just don't work for me very well, and I really want it to work, so. I don't know why, I just came in from outside, but I don't know why I had the sniffles. Don't have a cold, but tis the season for sniffles. So. Um, golly, wish me luck on this, guys, because this stuff scares me. But like I said, if you don't practice, you're not going to get good at something that you want to master. And, I, you know, a trip stitch would be a fabulous thing with these three little things. The other one, I have another set of these, and that is going to be uh, probably balloon kiss pour with three different colors, or three different ways. And, yeah, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Um, so, let me go ahead and get the pillow down. Hopefully I thin these out enough, because Dutch pours require pretty thin paint. I don't want my bottom to be too thin, so this is a pretty creamy thing. And again, I'll scrape up this paint after I put these up. So, let me move this around a little bit here. Uh, so these are, I think, one and a half inch gallery wraps. 
get some up at Michael's because, you know, sometimes you go into Michael's and you can't walk out without getting something. And this is interesting. It's like a very steel blue under this light right now, so it's interesting. I'm still like in my mind thinking about how I want this composition to look. So uh, if I get a little quiet, that's why, because I'm still thinking. I almost wasn't going to do it. And I'm looking at these canvases and I'm like, oh, oh I gotta do it. I gotta step out of my comfort zone. I've had some really excellent experiences in the past week. With painting that I am just really excited because I can feel it getting closer closer to actually you know getting some of these sold because that my confidence level is going up and that's a really good thing um, but yeah here I am doing something that scares me but that's okay I had to kick Lexi out she was literally getting into everything and I have a competition painting over here trying to dry and if she put her little paws on it, I think, well, maybe it would have been kind of cute, but she would have got paint everywhere. <laughs> so I got pillow paint down. And, uh, oh. so the idea here is to, uh, I, I got it. That's some work to do. I see canvas already coming through. Can't have that. Cannot have that. I'm gonna have to put more paint down on that thing. So pretty. All those metallics getting in there. That's really neat. More pillow paint from this guy. canvas thank you very much anybody else all right let's see Should blow out pretty good, I'm hoping. Oh, it really wants to come in. It really wants to just show up. Oh, so I'm not gonna fight this. I'm just gonna make sure I got as many air bubbles out of here as I can. going to have to Okay, guys. Oof. That is 
carry business right here. I'm nerve-wracked about this. Let me get these out of the way. I do have some white cell activator if I need to come back in and make something else happen. But, um, yeah. We're going to give this a shot. Good old college try, you know? Let's just get into it. This could be somebody's favorite painting. No doubt about it. Okay. One more time on this one, okay? I'm glad I did that. Okay, good. definitely came out way better than I expected it to. I have to admit that. Way better. Alright, so to fix the edges.
gathered. So what I'm doing is I'm gathering the puddles from around and trying to keep it with the same color that is there. So might have some struggles on the insides. Sometimes you can just tap it and it'll get covered because you're breaking the seal. Maybe I'll be able to speed this part up for you. So I'm just using my fingers. You could use a little um, palette knife if you wanted. Probably would work out just fine. I know I use them all the time. So guys, I'm having struggles with getting really good photographs of my paintings to put on Fine Art America. It's making me a little bit frustrated. So I'm wondering, should I put like a local advertisement out? for like perhaps a high school student that's into to photography that would like to um, get some experience and maybe uh, give them portion of the sale? I don't know. I don't I always want to pay for it, you know? So I'm thinking I need to get in touch with either the local high school Bonnie Eagle or something and talk to the art teacher or photographer, whoever's doing it there. And see if anybody would be into it. I mean, I would even do a, a little competition, but I don't know if kids have competitions anymore. It's kind of strange. difficult. I should have just put enough on there to blow it all over, but I didn't want them. I don't know why. Sometimes I like the edges to be just like the remnants, you know, of what the pa painting is, but it's kind of like not the purpose of a gallery wrap. Because they're more expensive, uh, you know, you charge more for the art, so you really need to try to have those edges covered. 
It's just a heads up. Like if these were 4x12s in a half inch wrap, it would be a completely different price point. So think of that, guys, when you're trying to price gallery wraps. fun I go over to, to other artists their websites and see what they charge and it's interesting some people charge way under what it should be in my mind in my formulations some people are like what wow really you want that for that I'm not saying that it's not beautiful work it's all beautiful work but it, I always wonder how other people price their work And seeing people that, you know, have far more experience than I do, been at it for years, um, charging not enough, I'm like, uh, is there just something up with the confidence level? Or do they really believe that's all it's worth? I don't Oh. And what I could do with this, if I don't like the way these sides came out, I can paint them black. A flat black. This is coming out really neat. Alright, let me, let me look here. Uh, okay. So there's a couple things I definitely want to do. And let's see if I can pull it off without destroying the painting. It's probably not worth it. I don't think I'm going to do it. I don't want to ruin what I got. And sometimes when you wreck, it can be not good. I've had plenty of not good wrecks. I'm getting a little better at it, but. Yeah, so I've been uh, liquid, uh, acrylic pouring for over a year. Um, I've been a painter pretty much all my life, although I did take a long break because I got my heart broken. And the paintings for me were just too difficult for me to. Um, do. I just couldn't. I had lost everything I owned. And the thing, the most important things I lost were all my paints and my canvases and my existing paintings. And it was horrible. So <laughs> I literally just lost my mind. I mean, it, I just walked into the darkest part of my life at that point. I think it was 23 years old. And I had uh, moved down to Virginia with to, to be with my dad, my daughter, and my then mm, it, one that shall not be named because that is how evil that person is. But um, And we got snowbound. We got snowed in. And it was not good. And it ended very badly. It was, I don't know, maybe a little over... 90 days into my relocation to Virginia and I lost everything. I lost everything, all my money. The only thing I didn't lose was my car. I drove there in a truck and I went home in the Chevy Nova, 1988 Chevy Nova. Those little Toyota looking ones. Um, and put my tail between my legs and moved back to New York. And it was brutal what transpired from there on. And um, losing the art, I couldn't handle it. So I stopped. I dabbled in uh, candle making after that, shortly after. And um, it was a little artsy craftsy stuff, you know, but no more sitting down to an easel with a paintbrush. And it went on for a very long time. Then, 
Lee Sonwa, she's one of my friends, she's an artist friend. She created an art challenge, and I just painted, and I really opened up and I started doing some digital art. I still couldn't pick up a pen. I couldn't pick up paint. But I, I kept trying, and um, well, lo and behold, here I am, 50. So I move, I move up to Maine. I'm 48 when I move up here, and I'm like, uh, I need to really get back into that. And so I did. And um, I am so happy I did. Yes, I'm very happy. I'm in love with this trip stitch. I hope she dries good. Let's bring you in for a closer look. Ah. And we will be back also tomorrow. You won't notice the time go for a uh, 24 hour try. So here they all are. Sorry about the glare, but I'm working on getting this lighting better. Yeah, that's really interesting. Here's this guy. Mm-hmm. Then this guy. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'll see you in just a few seconds. All right, here are the 24-hour dry results of the trip titch I did yesterday. Uh, I do love it. This, I think, would be something I'd really want to epoxy over. Just because um, I, I'd like to pull those colors up a little bit. Um, but I, I absolutely love it. It's a beautiful piece. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much.